I'll do it in Python. Python is a programming language. This is the Python interface. Uh, lets you just type a little bit of code and watch it work. Please watch. This is your every expertise. Yeah, Python is my best programming language. I'm not like great at it, but I'm uh, good enough for what I do. It's like five plus five is ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm just showing you. Uh, so. This is uh, A equals 5, B equals 6, A plus B is 11. <coughs> All right, regular expression. So if I have, uh, I'll have a string, and that represents my text. So uh, I'll just call it text is equal to, you know, what? What should it be? Give me a sentence. Ask me. What? Hello world. Hello world. Well, give me something longer. I'll say hello world. Hello world. My name is Kevin. What else? Ask me. All the students get paid. One. Hello clock. <laughs> okay. So, you guys all read this in the back. I feel like some of you are doing social media in the back. Am I correct? Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> So to run a regular expression, uh, you have to like import the regular expression module so you can access regular expression functions. Now I can write a regular expression. So I'll just say, uh, so we're going to say, uh, what do we want to look for? What do we want our pattern to look for? A L A M. Not the name. Okay, a name. Well, how about just capitalized words? If you, capitalized. Ask it, if you ask it to look for Kevin, does it break? No, I can make it look for Kevin. It won't break. But we'll look for capitalized words. That's not very funny. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So capitalized words. So we're going to say, let's call it cap pattern. Word, word. Is equal to, uh, it's called read.compile. Okay. Are, okay, so after this apostrophe, I can write my regular expression. What's so, the R apostrophe? The R makes it so I can write regular expressions uh, in the normal way, basically. It's, it takes care of a few problems. So, what do I want to look for? A capitalized letter to start? So, to do that, I can do this. I can do in a bracket, capital A, capital Z. That'll look for, this means it looks for one capital letter, anything between A and Z. Remember, inside the square brackets be four. So it means A or B or C or D. Does okay. that only give you the H then, because that's the first one? This will only give me the first letter, so I need to do something else. Yeah. So now I need to check for more letters, right? But this is going to make sure the first letter is capitalized. So you want more letters? So we can do also A to Z with lowercase and then do a plus or something. Well, what I was saying is the <coughs> first one that you wrote, the capital A to Z, yeah. will that only give you the H because that's the first one, or will it give you all of the capital? Okay, so Didn't it say in the article that it stops looking after it finds the first match? It does. So what it, that means is after it finds the first capital letter, like once it matches the capital A and Z, you'll find K. It'll go to the next part of the expression. It'll find the H. The 
an H? Hello. Or an H? Okay, so you're saying it'll only find it once. It'll only find the H and then stop, right? I mean, I'll only find the word hello, for example, and then I won't find Kevin? Right. Is that what you're saying? Okay. So... It depends. Um, you write it so it'll just match one, but then uh, there's a there's a there's a, a function here. Like find all. It'll find all versions of this within the string. Oh, that's a different. If this is the regular expression module that I at am accessing, compile is one way of creating your regular expression and saving it to a variable. There's another function called find all. Once I have my variable saved, I mean, I don't expect you to understand all this. Okay. But I, what I'm saying is I can match this multiple times in the okay. screen by using the find all command. I think this will work. Do you guys think this will work? We're going to find out. Right, let's test it. <laughs> okay, so that's my. Okay, so this says find a capital letter. Then find a lowercase letter one or many times. So the way you, uh, so I'll say the results are equal to cat pattern dot find all, and then you put the text. I think that's what you need. Oh, right, that's why I didn't work. Okay. Cat pattern. Oh. Okay. Okay, so now the results are stored in a list. So I can do the length of the results, and it should be three, right? You basically screen So I can say, I can access the first item in the list by saying results zero, or I can just say four, I in results, print I. And so those are in here. It's just saying it knows results of, is a list item, a list object. So the I is saying for, you can call it I, you can call it X, call it whatever you want. Same for X in the results for each item in the results, print the item. So. The problem with this regular expression, though, is what? It will also match. Say the text has something like, I don't know. Why didn't it match the PT the capital? Because it only wants the first one to be capital. Oh. But if we had, uh, I don't know, like the R was capitalized for some reason, then we ran this again. Uh, Results equals that. And then we print the results, and it found like half a word. So, like I said, was it you here, friend, that was brought this up? You want word boundary, so that I could make my regular expression a little better. Okay, so I think. It's a slash B, and slash B. I think that's what it is. Then we'll do the find all again. Look at the results. And it didn't get the hack. So it's like regular expressions. We have a very scratchy surface as to what they can do. If you're thinking to yourself, I want to find something in the text, and I can kind of make a rule about it. Right? it starts after this word, and it ends at this word, or something like that, and then you can make a pattern to match it and find it in the text. Uh, any sort of, anything that's systematic about the text, you can sort of write a regular expression to find it. Anyway. We'll do more of this in a second. Let me get back to the presentation.
guys remember the three steps for text analytics? Select your text, prepare the text, and analyze. Right. And then analyze had two steps, which was selecting the features, and then doing something with it, basically. So here's an example that I put together for a paper I'm writing. And I'm trying to sort of just demonstrate how this could possibly be useful for an external auditor. And I'm probably going to get some feedback that says, you know, this is not good to come up with something. Like but it still is good for class. Illustrate my example. So there's someone reported on the risk factor section, item 1A. The company, since like 2007 or so, has to list their risk factors. So, what do they list as the risk factors and how does it change over time? That could tell us a great deal about the company. So the first example is going to detect changes in risk factors from one year to the next within the same company. The second example is to compare risk factors between two different companies. See if they're the same or different. So the first example I used Microsoft. So from 2007 to 2008, in their risk factor section of the 10K, what they do is they list all their risk factors. Right? They give a title to people. And underneath each title, they describe what that risk factor is. So those are the titles, all right? So in 2007 to 2008, those are example titles of the risk factors. And you can see that the ones I chose, anyway, are identical. They didn't change anything. So I want to find out if there are any new risk factors or if there are any old ones that drop out. And that can tell us if I'm company, right? So what do I do? <coughs> First, I prepare the text by putting all the risk factors into separate text files. So there's one text file, is one second. Then I compared the text files to each other to see if they were similar. And when I compared them to each other, I used a matching algorithm called Token Set Ratio, and there's a website for it. And basically, it takes a sorted intersection of two tokenized strings and returns a matching ratio between the intersection and the shorter string. So obviously, you guys. Understand it, because I barely understand it. And, uh, and I'm going to get it. Okay. Let me show you what it does. Okay? So let's say we have two sentences. Someone give me a sentence. Sorry, give me a sentence. It's a tough class. Do you guys think this is a tough class? Yes. Oh, that kind of makes me feel good. <laughs> it's a tough class. All right, now I need another sentence. Sort of similar. It's a fun class. It's a fun, and let's add a word. So, we need to compare these strings. Okay, take the sorted intersection of two tokenized strings. So the first thing that is done is the strings are tokenized. Okay. You guys don't like that kind of history, but this is illustrating. So, you tokenize the strings, it basically means you split the sentences into words. So, let's put commas between the words. It's Okay, I've tokenized it. We've separated the sentence from the words. Not a sentence anymore. This one. Okay. 
And you have to sort. We have to sort them. So we're going to sort them out the bed. So this one becomes A top. A class is done. This one. A and so A and class. So after you, uh, I guess, I guess, I, I guess. So the way it works is it doesn't. I guess it doesn't exactly sort out that So let's just say. What it does is it, it sorts them so that everything that's matching is lined up first. So now that I have this one sorted, we can say A class is uh, and there's no top, right? And happy. So it takes the intersection of the two, so it finds out which which uh, tokens are the same in the in the two lists. So it's basically right here, right? So that's where they intersect and returns the matching ratio between the intersection and the shortest range. So basically, it's saying there's three that are the same, right? And it takes the ratio of this and the length of the shorter string, so it's 3 over 4. So this would get 4.75. That's what that means. And that's what I did with the risk titles. Find out which ones were similar to each other. Alright. So this is a heat map. And you can do it in Excel. You just push like a button. And across the top, I have the titles from 2007, the risk titles. And across the side, the risk titles from 2008. And here's a exploded, a exploded view. So if you get a score of 100, it means they're identical. And anything less is not identical. So you can see. All the risk titles basically have an identical back. Except for this one. This one <coughs> has no match at all. And so this is a new risk in 2008 in Microsoft. We may experience outages and disruptions for our online services if we fail to maintain an adequate operations. So clearly, this could have been part of the 2007 set of risks. But it's a new one in 2008. So I, then I compared the content of the risk pattern to see if anything had changed underneath the titles. And the content is also basically identical year over year. So there was very little modification in this section of the 10K. So this could be very useful for external parties to see which parts of the 10 k have changed and which parts have stayed the same. Alright, any questions about this little study? So then I compared risk titles between companies. So I look at Adobe and Mac. The first step I took was I got them to prepare the text, and that took an extra step in preparing the text and removing stop. Stop words are common words like uh, and, it's, the, from, you know, those are common words. So a lot of times you remove stop words before preparing text, and you'll get 
more useful results. I use a different algorithm to match uh, the titles. What happened was, when I used this uh, co-consent ratio algorithm between two different companies, a uh, horrible result it looked like none of the titles match. But reading them, I can see that some of them meant the same thing, even though different words were used. So I use this algorithm called TFIDF. Stands for uh, <coughs> Turn Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. Basically, what this algorithm does is it says if there's a term repeated over and over in a document. set of documents. And the word analytics doesn't really appear in the other documents. And there's a good chance that that word analytics is important to the document in which it appears. It must be a thousand analytics. On the other hand, the word the also appears a lot in that document. But it appears a lot in every other document. So it's not as important. So that's what TFIDF is saying. Say that there's one document where one word appears a lot, but it doesn't appear much anywhere else, and that's an indicator of what that document is about. So what this algorithm did is it gave weight to important words in the risk titles. It said this risk title must be about this. It ignores words that happen all the time, like maybe 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 uh, every, you know there's other fun things or happy things. Maybe class only appears in uh, or top. Right? It finds the important words and it weights them. So now, say there's two important words in two different risk titles, they'll get a high similarity. So I'll show you the results of this. So with this heat map, you get a lot of zeros, a lot of documents are completely underrated. You get a lot of really low scores, like 0 0.02. You don't get any 100s or 1s, I guess it would be. The highest one is 0.87. And there's a 0.7 and a 0.67. But what does that mean? Well, it turns out a score like a 0.36 actually indicates high similarity between risk titles. <coughs> so here's a sample of titles with very different words, but this algorithm detected that they were similar in meaning. Okay, first, here's a risk in McAfee that's not, not in the adult. We have experience and may continue to experience material weaknesses and significant deficiencies in our internal control and financial reporting environment. So that's important to know about McAfee. Here are two that are in Adobe but not McAfee. Catastrophic events may disrupt our business, which could be anybody's risk. And if our goodwill, goodwill or amortizable is paid the last to repair, you may be required to report a significant charge to earnings. That's an important risk, and it describes Adobe. It may be McAfee doesn't have that. Okay, so here's some masters. And I'll let you guys just read them. They're very similar in meaning. And this is the highest match score. So they're both talking about uh, kind of political economic conditions in the world, right? So a lot, you know, they did a pretty good job matching these together. It would not work well with that matching algorithm over there. Here's another one where this paragraph matched up with these two, and this is the title, with these two titles, uh, 0.58, 0 0.53. And you can see these two titles are pretty much components of this one uh, magazine. Both 
what we were talking about with makers, data class, intellectual property rights. Okay. All right, so here's another one where the risks are very similar, but they're said in a very different way. There's another one, and the, the score is getting lower and lower, but it's still powerful enough to identify similar risks. So what can we do with this? Now that we can say, okay, here are all the risks that are typically stated in the industry, and now here are the companies, here's the company that doesn't match industry standards for risk disclosure very well. So they can drive the kinds of questions we ask in our audience, or internally, we could use that to benchmark how good a job you're doing in disclosing risk. Also, this detect how businesses change over time. So imagine we had this over five years for one company, see how risk 